So um if if you all allow me for a minute, man, let me let me just gush for a while on the greatness of E24, man. Or should you see their ability to just find these gems out of the millions of shows, sorry, millions of movies out there, boy, and you know, just 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 for just for people like me to just consume and be like, wow, like I can't believe that if it's still you actually put a movie like this now, now, now I feel like there's hope in the world in terms of just, you know, just, just freshness and originality as far as movies go, right? So, to kick things off, let me talk about Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. This was a show that I was excited about from the moment I saw the trailer for this, right? Um, yeah. Because essentially, it's the first, in quotes, family film from E24. Because right. pretty much everything that they've, they've, they've dropped so far has been, you know, more or less leaning towards the whole R edge now, you know what I mean? It's it's just too artsy for kids. So right. seeing this here, and you know, it's, it's it's clearly meant for well, not just specifically for kids. Now. It's a family film, right? That's what it is, right? But just the the character of of of, of this show here. I have to talk about the character. That's what really drew me in, because like, I've never seen a character like this before, ever. Right. And there was something so strange and charming and bizarre about it at the same time. Yeah. I was like, I mean, it's from E24, bro. So, hey, I mean, I have to applaud them for, for actually doing something different, right? So, yeah, what this show is about, right? So, you know, going in, going into this kind of blind, right? I just saw a trailer of it months what, ago. Wait, what, what is, what, what, what Marcel, when I, okay, so I never watched it, but what it remind me of, okay, and the only reason I, I think about this is because I think one of our friends have it as his cover. Uh, anybody remember? Oh, I did talk about it. Teeny, teeny super guy. Remember that shit on Sesame Street? Yeah. Teeny little super guy. Teeny little, teeny super, little guy. super guy. That is what That's it reminds me of. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That is what um, it reminds Yeah. By the way, as, as I bring up that though, and this is like a dream film that I always wish that PBS so I think it's what, HBO who run in Sesame Street now, right? Yeah. I, well, I wish I that, that they could do a special like this. Right. Where they actually zero in on the animators who work on these on these these segments right, for the for like decades, way yeah, could they do so much great work, just so much influential like characters and songs and whatnot, and you have no clue who who animate these things, you know? Yeah. No? So yeah, when it came to teeny little teeny little super guy, that was the first time I that was like my first true exposure to to stop well, I should say modern stop motion animation. Yeah, exactly. Right. I, yeah. Because, you know, like, growing up, we know about the Ray Harryhausen stuff, right? But yeah. here's, like, okay, we, we show in here a kitchen. We show in here a cup with a character. The character's animated. He's talking, but he's moving, right? And they have segments involving them. There's, there's a famous one involving a baseball game. So, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's like they're doing modern things, the real things, now, but it's, it's cups, though. You know what I mean? It's how yeah. they do that. But, yeah, man, I don't know if if HBO whoever is listening to this story, but y'all 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 need to do like a a re, like a like a special retrospective look on the animators right, who who work on those clips, man. Because yeah, they were they were great. I, I mean, that's the stuff that you know myself and Ricardo we grew up on, right? But yeah, when I when I saw the trailer for this, I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking um, T little super guy, right? But yeah, so didn't even know the context behind this, right? But um the voice actor for this right is jenny slate right you know she's okay. a comedian right. a writer right and she actually created this character in 2010 right you know she was just born at a wedding i uh, just read it in, on a site here and she just created this character along with um her friend who actually directs this film is um dean flesher camp right fletcher camp and he know well dean himself actually is the co-star if you will of this show because yeah essentially this is the marcel show and what it is is this essentially a mockumentary. That's what it is, right? And it is about this director, this amateur filmmaker, as you call him, by the name of um, Dean, right? So he's playing himself, right? And yeah, essentially he, through some circumstances, just stumbles onto this shell, this talking shell, right? Um, who design-wise is just so, it's just so unique, but it's so cute at the same time. So he has one eye. He has a mouth like right in the middle of his um of of of, of his face, if you will. Um, the 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 shell part, which you do, you you take like a second eye would be there, but the actual shell extension is at his right side of his of his um, head, and he has like these small feet with these shoes on. So that's why in the title, the shoes on, right? 
and yeah, essentially, it's just this guy just doing this documentary on this 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 character, right? Yeah. Um, he lives with his his um, grandmother, who is um, voiced by Isabella Rosalini. I didn't even know oh, that she was. Oh. This. I was like, all right, big names, big names, right? And at the moment, what we learn is that this is the only family member that he lives with. He was separated from his extended family because the original owners, the well, is a husband and wife who well divorced, right? So they split up. And in the process, well, the, the extended family ended up going across with the, the guy, right? While the while the girl more or less ran off, right? And it's just essentially him just kind of wanting to reunite with his family, right? But in the process of him doing this this documentary, so what the guy does, what Dean does, is that he actually uploads little clips of the of the documentary itself to YouTube. So you know, eventually he builds this 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 cult following, and yeah, he becomes this um he becomes this this trending icon, if you will. He becomes not so much part of pop culture, but people know about him, you know, through you know through social media and whatnot, right? And that eventually leads to um, and you see it in the trailer, um, a sixty minutes interview, right? But in the process of that, it is really about him more or less trying to reconnect with his family because, yeah, at the heart of it all, he wants to reconnect with his extended family, but also his relationship between him and his grandmother. I'm not going to say what happens. I'm, I might kind of spoil bits of it in my review itself, but, yeah, you really see their relationship. And it, it essentially it is about him, you know, having to learn to live life, you know what I mean? And, you know, he's, he's always about... um. Just, just essentially him kind of feel like he can't, like he just doesn't have the will to at times, right? You know, well, okay, so slight spoiler, something happens to grandmother and he starts to fear that, you know, if she were to die, then, you know, that will be it for him, right? But he, throughout the show, he learns that, you know, he has to continue to, to, to you know, to move on, you know, to move right. past the grief. And I'll stop here. So... Yeah, um, E24 does a, does a family film, boy. And the front of the part, what I love about this thread is that it could have just been this simple story about this cute little creature and, you know, how he sees the world and, oh, he's so cute and all that kind of stuff. But what he showed us so well, Dredd, and, and this is so amazing too because I know this was based off of, well, actually it's based off of a short film and then they actually made like, I think it's some, they, they made a book, I think it was, they were, okay. they, that was a, a New York Times bestseller, right? Believe it or not, right? But it feels like they expand on the world of, you know, the, the book and the, and the short film. I haven't, I haven't read or, or seen both, but it feels like, a gradual update of those um of those existing materials, right? Yeah. And it just it just it just totally works, man. It it, it feels well I'll try to say that it, it feels mature enough in the term, in, in the way how um the character views life and how the, the you know just the, what the character goes through and whatnot, right? But it's still digestible enough that, you know, families of course could watch it, but kids could understand it as well too. And, right. You know, it really has strong lessons in terms of family, right? It's all is really about family and all about, you know, well, sorry to say, slight spoiler, is about grief as well too, right? It's about moving past grief and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And yeah, I mean it it's it's simple, but it's just so profound at the same time, man. And you know, they just hit these these emotional beats, man. You know, there were moments where you know, your, your your boy was close to tearing up at times. I mean, yeah, you know, when right, nice it the relationship between him and the grandmother, I mean those totally work, right? I can relate to those, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the, the stuff involving the family and all that kind of stuff was great. Um, really at the heart of it, well, what, what makes the show work is, of course, Marcel, man. I mean, Marcel is just such an endearing and charming character, man. Like, you will instantly love this character, man. And I love that, you know, Jenny doesn't voice him as, you know, a cartoon character. He, he, right. he sounds pretty much like a child like he, he sounds like a like a like a like a human child. That that's really what they're going for. It sounds like a human child, you know, the way how the character how, how Marcel tickle eats things and you know it's very childlike, right? And it makes sense, you know what I mean? Because essentially you're seeing you will through Marcel's eyes, right? Yeah. And I have to talk about the 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 um the direction here. Direction here is fantastic, but you know, they do they use a lot of macro photography here, you know what I mean? A lot right, of uh, right, right, right. You know, Tilt the, shift stuff I'd imagine. Yeah. You know, a lot of deep focus and all that kind of stuff. So it literally right. puts you in the shoes, literally, right, of Marcel, man. You, you really do see the world from a different lens, right? And, you know, literally just one eye this 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 character has. But So it's just really cool how, how it does that, right? 
also the mockumentary approach it, it totally works as well man you know what i mean right. and it, it makes sense because yeah it's just this guy who i guess is down as luck and he just find this this intriguing subject is like yo i i want to i want to make a film about this right and you know he kind of well i i assume he himself learns a lot about life too eh? because yeah as as childlike as marcel is yeah he he have a lot to say about how we should view life and how we should view the world around us and all that kind of stuff and it's really really great man you know what i mean um the music is is pretty is pretty decent as well man i'll, I'll bring it up in the next review that will be um well, this guy by the name of Disaster Piece, right? Yeah, right. he did some some pretty like really great music as well too. Not it's it's whimsical at times, but very charming, right? Very emotionally driven and all that kind of stuff, right? And lastly, man, um, sub motion animation for this totally totally works, man. There's not a lot going on, right? But that that's the beauty of it. It looks like there isn't a lot going on, but especially when you think about the fact that you're using you're incorporating real life, you know backgrounds and sets and whatnot right right and showing this you know stop motion character moving about and thing too it, it looks very lifelike very real um yeah they really did a great job in terms of just kneeling the movement uh, you, you see some pretty like cool movements of the characters well done. i'm not gonna spoil anything beyond that but yeah um it it just puts you into this world of this really unique um character man and it it, it just absolutely would man but like my my one my one big takeaway from this though is that it's E two four of all people put this out, right? Like you would think right. it'd be something like a, a a 20th century fox. And you know, if, if it was something like a real big company, you know, they would uh, make this thing look real lavish and you know, real large in life. Like say like a like a babe or or a Stuart Little, right? Just thinking about right. 90s right, 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 right. friendly films, right? Yeah. This one, especially with the mockumentary of, uh, approach, it has appropriately low budget look to it though, but it still feels it, it it feels perfect. It, it feels authentic. It feels like it needs to be that way, man. And yeah, I mean, points for you to for actually like finding this show and like putting it out there, man. Um, so in closing, even though I know this movie came out last year, um, well, I mean, the trailer for this came out this year, so we had a theatrical release this year, right? But still, um, many people I assume will be watching this in 2022. So of course, me seeing this in 2022 yes i love this and this is definitely going to be my best stuff for this year man i nice one, yeah. yeah this this is a show that i wholeheartedly recommend though but go try to go in as blind as you can have an open mind understand that this is not trying to be some sort of big budget family movie right it's very low budget and whatnot though but still the techniques they totally would the animation works but it's really the storytelling and the characterization of Marcel that that app and, and of course grandmother forgot to mention that too that totally makes the show work man so yeah written wise man um strong four to light four and a half out of five man i really really dug this man this nice. this, this was great nice. this is really great and in closing this show is so great man and and i, I really have to give credit for the documentary approach man it's so well done yeah that i imagine you like for me personally i would like want to see more like i don't know outtakes or bloopers or just start, like deleted scenes if you will man right. you know just to show me more of master show me more of how he moves about in this house how he moves about in the world how he sees you will and all kinds of you want to see more of this character even though the, the film itself is like about an hour and a half you still you, you come out of it wanted to see more man and that's right. exactly nice, yeah. so yeah master with the master the shell with shoes on is a, is a win from from e to four right and just to jump into the to the other show here bodies 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 right yeah is another one as well man so what this is right um right. I believe so i know i know this movie had some drama around it um what, what, what drama is this Maybe. okay so just just don't want to spend too much time on the drama but is um i think so Amanda, the star of it, one of the stars, Amanda, Amanda Stelzberg. Oh, um, uh, I mean, yeah, Amanda Stenberg. Um, right, Stenberg, right. So she is apparently the <laughs> a New York Times woman who you know, um, reviewed it. She said or something along the lines of, um, you know, it shows is, is, is too, too much skin or something along the lines of too much salaciousness in it, and that is why she didn't like it. And there's a parade okay. of that. And so Amanda apparently um, attacked her. Well, not attacked her. Uh, Amanda sent a message, a private message to her. Something along the lines of, if you watch the film, instead of watching my breasts or something like that. Uh, so what happened is that she, the woman is apparently gay, but Amanda is also uh, uh, out lesbian as well. So Yes, I, I know that, yeah. Yeah, so they, they bring a whole, but there's a whole drama about it because like she tried to 
turn on a man, they try to make it out well, a man. Let me say something homophobic. But like she like didn't know or think how Amanda was gay. And that was a whole thing. So it ended up burning she down and she ended up like deleted all her online activity. It's a whole it's a little drama. Uh, that's the reason nobody filmed. Like it's like, okay, buddies, buddies, buddies. It's a thing, I'll make an effort to watch it, but like this is the only drama wrong that I watched. It was funny. Like, I, I didn't was... even know there was drama to it. To Again, it's only because I spent way too much time on TikTok. So, like, that's the got that problem. That's how you found out. It was like you found on Twitter, like you saw some article there or something. No, it's, it's well, TikTok and Twitter does overlap each other a lot in terms of the same drama nonsense. Though. I don't, I don't, I don't cut out the, the, this drama, but, you know, drama in my life. But yeah, that's about it. So that's yeah, the only well, thing I know well, about. Well, you know, it's a good thing that they're talking about social media here because um, in a in a way, this show really kind of touches on that and kind of pokes fun at it as well too. Right. It's kind of examining it and poking fun as well, too, right? So I will touch on the whole saliciousness of the show a bit, right? But um, essentially what it is, right? It is directed by Helena Regin. If I got the name wrong, forgive me, right? She's a Dutch actress. Um, this is a English language debut, right? And essentially, well, before I get into the genre of it, right? I'll, I'll get into that in, in, in my review, right? So yeah, so essentially we are introduced to um, seven characters, right? So the first one is well Amanda Stenberg's character, Sophie, right? Yeah. So we introduce with her and her girlfriend B, who was played by Maria Bakalova. I didn't even know she was in okay. this. I was watching okay. it. He's yeah. like, I know, this nice. woman, I know this one. I was like, oh shit, right? You you from Borat too, right? Right. Well, you know, the best thing literally about Borat too, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. What we learn is that both of them are invited to this house party, right? Which is in the house of David, who is played by by, by the boy. Pete Davidson. Okay. Right. Yeah. One, one of the reasons why I wanted to see it was to see me boy Pete Davidson. Well, well, you know, former SNL member, right? Remember, he left um, this A-Lab, year, right? Yeah. 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 And right. Well, I, I, I presumably former boyfriend of <laughs> Kim Kardashian, apparently. I, I get the drama. <sighs> yeah. Dog, we, no, when your man will ever settle down, like, 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 I know he used it. I know he used it by now, but the man need to settle down, Trent. But anyway, anyway. Well, well, the drama. I know yeah, dra- drama, on. right? Moving on, right? Right. So, you know, in the process, now we introduced to, to two other couples, right? So we have um, Jordan. Well, sorry. Uh, actually, like, we have two couples and a, another girl, right? So we have Jordan, who was the ex of Sophie. We have Emma, who is the, the boyfriend. Sorry, who is the girlfriend of David. We have Alice, who is played by Rachel um, Sennett. I'll talk about her in a bit. And she is dating this older guy by the name of Greg, right? He's played by Lee Pace. I know I've seen his, his face already. Yeah, uh, I know I've seen him in that show too. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We know right, he, yeah he's, he's Ronan, right? Duh. Ronan, yeah, Ronan, yeah. So, well, I, I know him from, I, my, my favorite character of his is, is from um, Halt on Catchfire. Uh, he was in Lord of the Rings, the, the, the spin off. Um, right, Hobbit. right, the Hobbit, yes, yes. Yeah, he yes, was in that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he did, 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 he yeah, so, right, so we have just these seven individuals here. There's one person by the name of Max who is not there. He was supposed to come, but they kind of give some reasons here or there. And, yeah, it's just essentially these, and they set it up early on, right? These privileged, kind of rich kids, Gen Zers, you know, yeah. having a party, right? And, you know, it's, it's so ironic that they have it during the night of a hurricane, right? So in the middle, or I should say before, before the current even goes, right? Uh, Sophie decides to play this game, right? Called Bodies, 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 right? So it's, I, I forgot the term we call, like, you know, like the spinny bottle kind of games. Right. Not yeah. Group games, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll never have I never and, and truth are there. And, yeah. Right, right, right. That, Stuff that, like that, that kind of thing. Right, is yeah. this, this, the pseudo adult teenage party games that is, you know, designed to bond, but it's mo- mostly designed to embarrass you too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Even early on, yeah. they say they, they, early on they say at the very end of the game somebody will end up well you'll end up crying at the end of the game, right? Yeah, it's always it's always yeah. something to be killed. Oh. Yeah. So the game itself, right, is not really important, right? That that that's one of the interesting things about this show because like when you hear what the rules of bodies, bodies, bodies are, it makes no sense. Essentially <laughs> what it is is that somebody is picked, right? Like they had a draw, you know, a a, a piece of paper with an X in it. Yeah. And that person is the murderer, right? So the person right. had to go around and he kill everybody else. But then when that person does the last kill or is killed, the lights go on and then everybody now have to figure out who the killer is. 
right. and that's more or less kind of looking at each person and saying okay it's you but what that leads to is oh you know you have this particular aspect about your personality that i don't like or something that i notice about you and this this is just everybody making each other out now to, to see who will break down first and then well the person who does it will kind of come out and say yeah it's, it's actually me right so right. yeah it, it, it kind of degrades everybody but that that's a game, right? That that's really what it is, right? Even right now to how it starts too, it's just essentially you're taking a shot. Sorry, you're taking a shot and then you're slapping someone in the face. And then the other person take a shot and then slap somebody in the face, right? So it's just basically like just degrading the person slowly before you even jump into the ship again, right? Current goes because you know there's thunder and lightning and all that good stuff now, and somebody dies, right? Somebody is killed, right? And from there is just this who done it. You wanna know who killed that person, right? And then literally, as the title says, yeah, well, bodies start piling on top of bodies, right? And, you know, it's just a matter of who the killer is and motivations and all that stuff. And I'll stop here, right? Yeah. So, essentially, like, when I saw the trailer for this, like, going in, like, you, you, you would think that it is a slasher flick. And it isn't really. It's really more of a thriller, um, a whodunit as well, too. But it's really a dark comedy, right? When, when it all boils down to it. Is just a dark comedy, right? Um, the characters themselves are meant to be unlikable, but you know, given the the genre, because it's spoken for the genre too, right? Right. Of you know the the, the teen slasher flick thing, right? Yeah, they're like, trying to, uh, is it is it as far as updating the screen formula? Is it like like that or not not um, that uh. not updating it? It's it's because that one was more celebrating the 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 horror aspect of it and saying, all right, in the nineties, slasher films wouldn't play like this, so let's just update things. So you get a right. full on nineties version of like what our old school like Halloween or something like that. That that's really what Scream was. Here is okay, we're using the genre of it, but we're using that to explore certain things. And essentially it is about, yeah, just just Gen Zers themselves, right? And just the ideals that they look up to, you know what I mean, is all about wealth and personality and all that kind of stuff. But they frame it in terms of, okay, it's just the characters here who who start off friendly, right? They're not all friends, right? But they all know each other. They're having fun drinking, doing drugs, yes, because they must have drugs because they're all rich and shit. Yeah. And it just takes one person getting killed to just break that whole foundation on everybody pointing fingers at the other person and accusing this other person of this one okay. thing leads to the next and you just see how it just all breaks down though. and that that is where the show totally totally shines man um the acting across the board is great but the person who i have to call the mvp in this is Rachel senat right um i know that she was in a film that i was supposed to watch called shiva baby um uh, from 2020 i never got around to watch it but um Dude, she's like the best character in this whole show, Alice, right? Um, okay. Is I want to say best. I mean, in terms of just how they pull off the performance. Because, again, it's characters that you're not really supposed to like. For, maybe to some viewers, they will just they will just be flat out annoyed by them. But I think that's really the point of it, right? Yeah, I mean, they, they, they're unlikable. They, but they're not detestable, right? And it's not like right. I relish too much in them being disposed of that's all i'll say but it's just really seeing how they all break down that really makes the show work right uh but at the heart of it all but sorry but despite all that you still get you know your good amount of you know um scares and you know atmosphere and all that right because yeah it, the show still kind of functions as you're watching like a, a thriller right but don't go into this expecting it to be a horror film like it's not a scary or frightening film it's just use the genre to just kind of poke fun at you know this this whole gen z stuff right but yeah um rachel who plays alice though she 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 crushed it dude. you know she was just it's just how she gave her all in that performance so that that's all i have to say she really was a standout and everybody else you know pretty much does their thing even even we boy pete davison i mean he is he is an asshole in this but they can't expect that just this the way how he looks and moves and all that kind of stuff um and it's just where they just take these characters though I thought was really great though. It was just like a really smart with the subversion of what we expect from, you know, slash films or whatnot, right? Um also what this show deals very well is just like the the atmosphere, like the the visual tone of it, right? Um from color correction to lighting and all that kind of stuff, it, it works well, right? Even yeah. And I would say like two thirds of it is set in the dark now, because remember, you know, current goes, right? Well, lights go, sorry. So yeah, a majority of it is done in low light, using low light cinematography, man. And yeah, it, it totally works, right? But another thing, 
this this show is not like reinventing the wheel or anything like that, right? So if you're some sort of diehard horror star and you go into this, you'll be like, yes, I'm familiar with this. I know this trope. I know that trope. I know this character could see this. I know this character could trip here, whatever it is, right? right? But the show is smart enough to say, yes, we know that. We know that. But we're playing with the troops as well. Too. We, we, we're tweaking it a little bit, but we're just doing it to, to have fun as well too, right? And that is really at the heart of it all. Because, yeah, as, as dark as the situation of these characters in, right? Both visually and, you know, um, emotionally, right? Um, the show does not take itself seriously at all, man. And I think that that's like the key to, to how the show, um, why the show works so well, man. I mean, yes, the characters are put through the emotional ringer, right? Um, there's frequent um, arguments, right, involving the characters, right? And they just, like, real making them all, like, just bashing them over, like, the presence on social media, who they were sleeping with, this, that, and the third, man. Yeah. And this really, is, is this really, like, a commentary on, yeah, like, how... You know this this world here you know, in terms of social media how you know you can just log in see somebody post and you know use that as fuel to just berate somebody right, right. That, that's really what this show is about right and yeah how how social media kind of works and you know well you know how how it could you know break down somebody that that's all right. i'll say right yeah no, it's it not it's not healthy psychologically for, for the wrong exactly. type of post and the sad part about social media is it's such a weird feedback loop because the worst type of personality for it is the person who seems to be most addicted to it like very few people who care about social media lives are ruined by social media. You, if you get a drifter, it's a tra- as I say, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Much, okay. much, it's much to the flame now. So, yeah. Yeah, and um, to touch on music, boy, um, I have to give props again to Disaster Peace, boy. This, this guy came right, nice one. a great score for this, right? So, what he does, right? So, I, I don't know big horror stand or anything, like that, but what he does well, right, is that he takes particular, I don't want to call it audio motifs but like essentially like bits of music right from horror films like the, the two that i noticed were halloween right the original one from john carpenter and um oh gosh what's the show by um suspiria from from okay right, um, okay. dario argento yeah this yeah, is how yeah, far this man went right but he 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 does he bit is pretty much like electronic edm and trap music that he does right but if you listen closely to the music, it has that that spookiness. It has that creakiness to the to the execution of the music right. and all that kind of too. So when nice, you listen yeah. to it, yeah, you, you swear like you're hearing. Uh, uh, it, it, you know, it's not like it's it's not like if somebody do like a trap remix of like some classic horror score. That's that's right. how it felt like. Play, Playboy Cardi, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh yeah. Speak, dude. Speaking of Playboy Cardi, right? So forgive me, people who on TikTok since 2020 dread. But they actually incorporate a song. It's from it's from We Boy Tiger, right? And Curtis Roach called Bored in the House, right? It came out in 2020 <clears throat> during the whole pandemic and all that kind of stuff. It is about the pandemic. It is literally about being bored in your house, right? That song is a banger. Like how they use that in the, in the, in the movie itself work when I heard it, because they play it like twice in the movie, right? Um I I, I instantly fell in love with that song. That that, that song slaps so hard right? and yet i know it must be have millions of tiktok videos especially probably done you know around the time when the song came out um you know you know dances and whatnot the song and whatnot but the song fits it totally works i mean if, you, if you're familiar with tiger and if you're familiar with dj mustard-esque production right. then yeah trust me when you hear that song dread you will you 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 will you will be you will be nodding your head to it right? that that song slap so hard but it fits so well with the with the will of the show here right and yeah man i i really enjoy this like i was i was like in terms of the salaciousness right just to touch on what um amanda was was you know making out the 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 other sorry the review of four yes it is salacious yes it is sleazy right it, it fits within that whole i mean look at the genre itself and look at the premise yeah. itself right it's just exactly. these kids these these youths who go into this house one night and you know booze and drugs right and sex and whatnot and then a killer is loose in the house i mean we've seen this hundreds of times right? like like right. Y- is that like you're gonna see some sort of artfully done version of this like no it, it of course it's gonna be salacious man so right i mean go, going back well because i don't even know what the review what the reviewer said about it what what she she complained about the the film itself being that or what 
No, no, she just, she just, I, I, I don't, okay, to be fair, I only know the side story around it, and again, gossip mongering, but uh, from what I understand, she just kind of complained of it being kind of noticeably distracting from the filmmaking, and it was just a, I forget she said something along the lines of a parade of breasts or something like that, and it's a whole thing now, but what happened is that, why, why it was, why it was, the, why the story was funny, and again, is where it kind of was a little connected to my, myself and, and talking about it, is that, she had no problem using her white woman tears now because she tried to make a a, a, a gay thing out of it, not knowing that Amanda was was non-binary and gay herself. Now. Um, as far as I don't oh, know. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. But I think that's my oh. pronouns, right? See, she did, right? I don't right, but uh, you have my point now. That that's why it, it, it come up in my, my feed. Like you know, usually when when bullshit like this come up, I was like, yeah, what does that have to do with me? And then when I, I try to like make the connection, it's like, okay, yeah, some white woman chicanery going down. Okay, that's why. Right, to some whiteness. So, yeah, that's what it was. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, that's where the drama, the real source of the drama was. Now. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's what it was. Yeah, go ahead. All right. I, 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 I can understand, right? Well, well, what I will say, though, before I get to written, right, is that um, this is the type of show that you have to kind of know what you're getting yourself into, but right. know that the show is aware of what it is, right? Right. Um, it is a social satire, right? And it, it is also you know, playing on, you know, slasher troops, right? So if you're going expecting this thing to be fully serious, then no, you, you, you're not going to enjoy this, right? But right. also if you look at the characters and you say, well, I can't really enjoy this because the characters are annoying. Well, that's the point. It's supposed to be annoying. I don't think personally, I don't find that they were too annoying. Like, you know, you, you, you kind of care to see who survives the night, right? But it's not like... They're all unlikable to the point that you just want to see each one of them get killed. Like, like I, 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 like it's not like that, right? But if you now look at it and you say, well, you know, these characters look, you know, these characters are terrible, and you know, it's all is the too privileged, and look at what they talk about, all that kind of stuff. Then yeah, this this show is not gonna be for you, right? right. If you kind of go in knowing that, yes, it is a, it is very self-aware, it knows what it is, um. And it's just kind of having fun with it at the same time, having fun with itself, then yeah, you will enjoy this. And for me, right. I was just really like, uh, while I was having fun and all that kind of too, I was really impressed by the the, the, the script though. I mean, if, if it's one thing the show just like excels at dread is the is is the writing in this, so the writing is so strong, man. Because remember, we, we're talking about the single location, we're talking about seven characters. And even though it's set in one night and we don't really know little about we, we don't really know much about the characters going in and you kinda despise them for this not mm -hmm. a lot of reasons, but you know, for certain reasons now. Um there's just so much attention to like characters and details and all that kind of stuff though. They just they will like t say one thing in one scene and then they will just come up in another scene just like that though. So it's one of those it's one of those shows that you have to be really attentive of what's being said and what's going on. Cause yeah, it, it, it comes back up in like, these really clever and unexpected ways, man. So direction works, acting works, storytelling works, um, musical choices, I forgot to mention works as well. And yeah, this was just, it, I, I just had a blast watching this. Like, I thought it was just, you know, E24 just doing a generic, you know, slash film. Like, but no, it's E24, man. They're going to do something totally different. And again, it's not like reinventing the wheel, right? There's nothing awfully different and unique and special, right? But right. it's just the little things that you do here, man, that really yeah. makes it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, as I said, the execution. Yeah, yeah, the execution is yeah, it is to be more important. Yeah, yeah, that, that's 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 we appreciate it. You know, you're not you're not yeah. inventing anything. But that's yeah, just pull it off well, and you know what you're going for. Yeah, right. Wrong and and I have to say, I have to say, these are the kind of these are the kind of like horror films that I that I that I gravitate to, man. I mean, just yeah. stuff that because I mean, by no trade, there's there's only so much you could do with specific subgenres in horror. And there's only so much you could do, dread. When somebody could say, you know what? I know this thing exists, but I don't really get to waste my time trying to do anything totally new. But here's what: how I could modernize it, how I could tweak this thing a little bit and make it right. much more clever and smart than you would expect. Yeah, that's what the show does so well, man. So yeah, another hit for you to four, man. Strong four to four to five, man. I right. wholeheartedly nice. recommend that that you check it out. But again, just go in knowing that it's not a pure horror. 
um it's, it's more like a mismatch now. so you get your horror you get the trills you get some really like dark comedy and you know social satire and all that but and lastly please don't get attached to these characters at all just just do it <laughs> even if you if, even if you hate them or not just don't get attached to them at all because <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you will be entertained by what happens with them man. but yeah this 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 is another win for you to four man so they have two hits in 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 the, in the collection right now um, and yeah, you could expect these to, to, to show up on the best of the year, man, for sure. 